The scandal at the VA hospitals has already cost the Secretary of Veterans Affairs his job, but Congressman Frank Lobiondo is so frustrated with the treatment that veterans have been receiving, or the lack thereof, that he has introduced a bill that could let some of them seek treatment elsewhere. A Congressman Lobiondo joins us now from our studio at the Richard Stockton College. It's good of you to join the program again. Precisely what are you advocating here, sir? Well, I'm advocating that a veteran would have a choice. They could either choose to go to a current VA facility or they would be able to use a veterans issued card to go to the doctor or hospital of their choice. And in a situation like the second congressional district where you have to cross a state line and it's rather complicated and time consuming to get the care, I think that our veterans in this situation should have that option. So that's hence the legislation. Is this something that you would have advocated for or were considering prior to the scandal as we know it now unfolding? Absolutely. Uh, this is not a new idea. This is an idea that's been advocated for uh, probably over 20 years. But uh, without the motivation of the scandal, it was very difficult to get anyone's attention. It's critically important to have the veteran service organizations behind an idea like this, and not just behind it, but almost unanimously behind it. Uh, years ago, I think the VSOs were concerned that this may degradate the, uh, the VA system in some way, shape, or form. And although I talked to colleagues about it and talked to past chairs of the Veterans Committee, uh, it didn't get any tra traction. I mean, Senator McCain, I think, even talked about this um, in the presidential election that he ran in. I know Senator Cory Booker is currently talking about this now. I have talked to the chair of the Veterans Affairs Committee, Congressman Jeff Miller from Florida. Uh, we're good friends. We serve on the House Armed Services and the House Intelligence Committee together. Uh, he is supportive in concept of the idea. We expect there'll be additional ideas along these lines coming through, uh, but it's about time our veterans have the choice. Should the VA, as we know it, continue to exist? Should the VA hospitals, the network of hospitals, those services continue? Or is the damage so severe? Is, is the system so polluted, uh, according to some, that it needs to be torn apart, discontinued, or, or changed to an extent that we wouldn't even recognize the way it is right now? Well, I don't think it should be discontinued because uh, while there's a terrible tragedy and scandal that's going on, I think for, for many veterans, the care that they receive at their VA facilities when they can get that care uh, is care that they, uh, they're very happy with. So I would want to continue at least to give them the options, but certainly with General Shinseki uh, resigning or being fired, however you want to look at it, uh, it's unfortunate because he's a decorated war hero, but I, I think it has to start at the top and it has to continue all the way through. It's never been a problem of money. With all the troubles in Washington, with the bipartisan bickering or the bickering political bickering that's been going on, that has not affected the VA appropriations. So it's not a money issue, uh, but it's an issue of leadership, it's an issue of bureaucracy, and it's something that really needs to be revamped from top to bottom. But as we do that, uh, I believe that my idea will, number one, give veterans the top flight care that they deserve and expect for serving our nation. And number two, I think a byproduct will be that it will save the VA money in the long run. Congressman, you're also, as you indicated, you're heading back to uh, at least to another campaign for another term. You're going to be running against Bill Hughes, Jr., uh, the son of the man who you succeeded in Congress as well. But, but you, you want to go, so many members of Congress are so frustrated, many are retiring. Uh, do you think that the next Congress can be in a more effective Congress uh, than, than the past one, which has been widely criticized by, by so many on both si sides of the political aisle? Well, I think it can be more effective, and it has been criticized, but the good news stories have not been told. So on the committees that I serve on, uh, the House Armed Services Committee, a very bipartisan committee, passed the National Defense Authorization Bill overwhelmingly. Uh, the House Intelligence Committee, very bipartisan committee, 
We've passed intelligence authorization. The Republicans and the Democrats are speaking with a uniform voice for the agencies to protect our nation. And that's not reported very much. The Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, uh, under Chairman Bill Schuster and Ranking Member Nick Rahal, uh, functioning extremely well. We got a water resources bill passed and sent to the president no one ever believed could happen. And the committee that I chair, the Aviation Committee, is very bipartisan. Uh, Congressman Rick Larson, who's the Democrat ranking member from the state of Washington, we get along extremely well. In fact, our staffs are totally integrated on the Aviation Committee. So these stories aren't told, and a lot of the initiatives that we deal with are being able to move forward. Now, on the big issues, there are more problems and I hope we can find a way to bridge that gap and to get results for the country. Congressman, have to leave it there. Always a pleasure, sir. Thank you very much okay. for coming on the program. Thank you.